Hi, my name is Christopher Burns. I'm here to speak about the one framework to rule them all. And before I start, I would just like to thank the team at Composability Summit. You rock. My name is Christopher Burns and I'm from the United Kingdom, home of Brexit. Brexit. I'm co-host of the FS Jam podcast, where me and Anthony have conversations around running full stack applications on the Jamstack. I'm co-founder and CEO at Everfund, where we are empowering devs to enable nonprofits. I've never worked at Mango or Fang, and I've worked in startups ever since graduating in 2017. So let's get into what is a framework, especially a JavaScript framework at the highest level is that a JavaScript framework is a collection of JavaScript code libraries that provide a web developer with pre-written code for routine programming tasks. Frameworks are structured within a particular context and help you create web applications within that context. But how does that actually look? And it looks something like this. There's so many logos here and you either know every single one of them or one and two, and that is okay. And we have new frameworks here, such as Quick and Hydrogen, all the way to the classics of React and Vue. All of these uh, logos may leave you feeling one of three ways. Ugh, <laughs> there's too many. My eyes burn from the choice. Or it's okay. And I know the frameworks that I would pick. Well, depending on what your choices are, I'm here to say that it's okay. And we should have as much choice as possible when it comes to picking a framework. And we should see as many frameworks as possible uh, grow and develop. Why? Well, we'll get into that in a minute. But first, I like to start with another analogy. And that's Nike versus Adidas or Adidas, if you're from across the pond. And you probably have an opinion in your head. Oh, I like Nike, or I like Adidas. I prefer X over Y. And you have your reasons to it, and your friend probably prefers the opposite company. And both is okay. But when you put on your glasses, it's actually next versus Gatsby all along. So how did the battle for the Jamstack framework start. And it really did start in 2018 when Gatsby and Nex um, really started getting going on GitHub. And this was obviously pre 500,000 downloads. And we saw Gatsby 2 uh, introduced into the market in 2018. And this is where I jumped onto the scene and really started using the Jamstack. And I loved Gatsby 2 in that moment. But as the years went on and we encroached onto the end of 2020, Jared Palmer released an article uh, called Gatsby versus Next with his opinions on which framework was better and which one he would choose in future uh, projects. This is when the dumpster truck happened on Gatsby, when true um, opinions came out on which one was better, Next.js or Gatsby. Gatsby had the image component that was really great at that moment. And Next.js had server-side rendering, meaning smaller build times and more. And these were dividing issues on the Jamstack on which choices to make. The market obviously went with the Next.js route as we saw it climb from 9 to Next.js 10 to 11 to 12, them little dips are Christmas or holidays, uh, as you call it, as we all call it. The biggest thing that I think here to notice is the gap between Gatsby 2 and Gatsby 3. Gatsby took a while to catch up to the feature set of Next with incremental static regeneration and SSR, but now they're almost at feature parity. Is one better than the other? Well, maybe that's up to you. No, but most people's opinion is Next.js is the still the one true framework of choice, no matter what you build. And I'm here to say, well, yes, you can use Next.js for anything, 
But actually, no, you shouldn't use it for everything. And how can we predict what framework to use and the future of frameworks? And which one we're going to pick in the future? And I think it starts with four fundamental frameworks of Remix that that is relying on core principles of the web, shipping less JavaScript to the browser and focusing on browsers, HTTP and HTML without too many abstractions over them. Astro, with its agnostic UI layer, allowing to use React, Svelte, Vue, and all of it mixed together in an island's uh, architecture. Solid, a better React that is programmatic and performant without needing a virtual DOM. It truly is reactive and would be what React would look like if it was made today. And quick, focusing on something brand new called reusability, an alternative to hydration, meaning that everything needed to make JavaScript run is compiled on the server, paused, and then sent to the client, meaning no waiting for parsing and execution of the rehydration or even binding of listeners. Builder.io managed to remove 99% of JavaScript on startup on their website. Wow. But with these future of the frameworks, React is still dominant today and will continue to be dominant. And one of the main reasons why is React is picked up by most people that come into the industry today. They necessarily even learn it before HTML and JavaScript and CSS. They just jump into React. And this is why we see so many libraries out there abstracting React and HTML functionality into hooks and uh, JSX components from things like React charts and animations to use scroll hooks. And, you know, the world is always still with authentication, cells from Redwood. We really have abstracted heavily on React and it's made it a really great tool for developers. But it has its downsides and we all know them and I'm not here to speak about them today. But one of the bigger things about React is that other players are starting to gain momentum slowly but surely they are joining more and more downloads. And Tanner Lindsay at the Tan Stack is one of my favorite reasons why I think the future looks more agnostic. Query table tables and virtual are just three of the uh, packages of his frameworks that he has made agnostic meaning if you're a solid user or a view user that you can now use them libraries we love meaning when it comes to choosing a new framework for a new project you think oh i want to use react table or react query oh but now there's no reason that I can't use SolidJS that is a better React because Tansac Query now supports it, Tansac Table now supports it, meaning there's so many new benefits that we have now by agnostic, agnosticating the libraries that we use. I think this is the future and I can't wait for more libraries to become agnostic and wrap um, la uh, framework libraries when needed depending on their use cases, from virtual DOM to um, vanilla JS. So back to the big question that was one framework to rule them all. So which one is it? Well, in my opinion, it really depends on the use cases. And if you're a hydrogen de developer, sorry, if you're a Shopify developer, then hydrogen should be the next framework you pick up. If you're building a startup, then Redwood should be the framework that you pick up. And if you're building a marketing website or a portfolio, it's probably overkill building it in Next.js. So use something like Eleventy or Astro. But what does that really mean? Is that every framework will have pros and cons and the best use cases and we need to find out the right frameworks 
for the right use cases. It's okay every single framework saying they can do X and Y, but we need to find out which framework is better for, say, e-commerce to documents and dashboards. Each project has different requirements from needing to load really, really fast to maintaining a great user experience over a long um, a long session. So to close it out though is, yeah, Next.js is still really great. I'm still going to use Next.js and, you know, you should too. But also keep looking on the horizon at all the other frameworks that are out there. My name has been Christopher Burns. Thank you for um, listening to my talk today. I'm on Twitter at Burned Chris. Um, my company is underscore Everfund on Twitter. And we are Everfund.io. And if you want to reach out to me, my DMs are open. Thank you so much for your time today. Bye. Hey, what's up? Thanks so much for watching that. By the way, if you got value from that, there's more where that came from. We want to invite you to be a part of our community. Go to composability.dev and register today. If you're already registered, you know what I'm talking about. Also, if you're on Twitter at all, go to JavaScript Jam and follow us. Why? Because on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we go live every single week and we're doing everything web dev. That's right. Whether you're a beginner, whether you've been doing this for a very long time, we love to hear from everybody. And we want you to be a part of that community too. So go to JavaScript Jam, follow us there, be a part of it. Oh, and if you had comments down below, that's where the live Q&As are going to be. All of our speakers, we're going to be lining them up, doing our Q&As. It's going to be so much fun. All right, we'll see you there.